You know, it's my closet. I've got all my clothes, they're all clean. Ralph Manning is home. After living on the streets of Los Angeles for nearly two years, he finally received subsidized housing. And with it, a new lease on life. I can't even tell you how happy I am about having a place to call my own, to go home to every day. It's quiet, and I haven't been in that situation in years. It's funny because I, I don't have much, um, and I've lost, like, you know, I can't even tell you, like, the, the, a lot of the important things that you keep from growing up or, um, Sorry. Ralph has little from his past, other than difficult memories of a father who had substance use disorder, an issue Ralph also lives with now, along with severe depression. For most of his life, Ralph received no help for either condition, and he's not alone. Fewer than 13% of people with dual diagnoses receive treatment, which significantly increases their risk of experiencing homelessness. And without housing, their symptoms greatly intensify. I had no prospect of anything, any kind of job, any kind of relationships. And I actually attempted to commit suicide through overdosing intentionally. And I just couldn't bear the thought of another day of uh, sleeping on the street and being on guard all the time. It was a story we heard over and over people with dual diagnoses whose conditions worsened when they lost housing. This is my car, uh, my front room. This is my bedroom. Sleep was hard to come by when I first became homeless. So, you know, I, I drank every night, which helped me sleep. I could feel the depression starting to creep in. Once it gets there, it's hell to get out of it. I felt like a piece of trash just being thrown away and kicked out of hospitals. When you're homeless and you don't have anywhere to live and you're mentally ill, it's hard to find proper treatment. There's a lot of resources out there, but you have to be willing to work within whatever the parameters of those resources set. The problem I see is that when you really need it, you're probably least willing to be able to work with those guidelines or rules. The complexity of living with dual diagnoses increases a person's risk that one episode of homelessness will lead to chronic homelessness. But experts say there is hope. In treatment facilities equipped to address mental illness, substance use, and homelessness, simultaneously. There was an older model that said to people who are homeless, you need to get well first and then we'll help connect you to housing. You need to be sober first or you need to have made it to a certain number of therapist visits in a row without missing one before we'll help you with housing. Wellness begins with a home. For someone who lives outdoors, it's extremely difficult to make appointments on time without losing your belongings. There's a whole host of physical health problems that exacerbate mental illness to take good care of our health in any domain. We need a stable foundation, a place to sleep at night, a, a door that we can lock, a sense of security. It's why some treatment centers now employ personnel whose sole focus is helping unhoused clients secure a home. Then, you know, the ultimate goal, get them settled and into treatment. The breakthrough for me was when I got housing. This is the longest that I have been stable for eight years to hold on to housing, which encouraged me to continue treatment at mental health to receive the proper attention that I needed and to take my medications. 
I'm housed now through the help of a gentleman who I met at Tarzana Treatment Center. He's a housing navigator who was working through them. Still, housing navigation is not universally available. And even if it were, there's a housing shortage. I have a counselor who is a coordinated entry system worker. He goes, don't expect an answer for at least a year. And this is my little slot. And I'm home for the night. Mentally, it starts really grating on you because it's like, when's this going to end? When is this going to end? For Ralph, homelessness has ended. And he says he feels lucky. He can now focus on treatment and think about his future for the first time in many years. Having a place to live has taken away a, a big part of why I feel like I use. With stable housing, it's just that, that whole part of the equation is taken care of where I, it's, it, that is good. I want to go to school. I want to establish relationships with my family again. You can't do that if you're homeless. So I um, can't tell you how grateful I am.